Have you ever felt like no matter how much value you contribute into your business, you're always the one stuck in the background doing all the grand work while other people get the glory without the hard work? Have you ever laid awake at three o'clock in the morning trying to come up with ideas to become more likable, yet firmly respected and acknowledged for your work? And then when the alarm goes off, it's 6.45 in the morning and you realize that you've been awake, worried about that nasty colleague who secretly has it out for you. You've just spent three hours of your precious time worried about a colleague who might backstab you at a meeting. Have you ever felt invalidated by a colleague's remarks on an important project that you've put your sweat, blood and tears into only to learn that that same colleague stole your idea and then sold it off to management as their idea while negating that they invalidated your hard work, they invalidated your creativity. If you've ever felt misunderstood undervalued or ignored please understand that sometimes people don't notice a diamond in the rough until the diamond gives itself permission to express its radiance you are the diamond and you need to give yourself permission to express your radiance your creativity your intelligence your compassion and your love on planet Earth. So I want to create a visionary. I'm an African business unicorn and I travel the world collaborating with other global unicorns to activate purposeful peace, surrender to inner happiness and make a shitload of money living out my mission and my purpose. I don't apologize for living a fucking good life. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. So, <laughs> please join me on this adventure. You might pick up some tips, you might pick up some tricks, you might pick up some tantric practices, for living your best life on planet Earth. You are not here to suffer. You are not here to struggle through life. Your life is purposeful, your life matters. If I can plant seeds of goodness, of self-love and self-compassion within you so that you can believe that you are deserving of a good life, I will have lived out my purpose today. So thank you for allowing me to plant some good seeds in your soul today. If you're faced with overwhelming change you didn't ask for, maybe it's in your relationships, maybe it's your finances, maybe it's your career, please add this declaration in the comment section right now. Please type after me. I now call on the wisdom and peace of a billion trees in a lush and fertile forest to guide my decision-making abilities right now. I declare that my mind makes the highest and best decisions from a place of plenty and peaceful ideas for myself and all of humanity today. It's already happening. I am receiving, I am giving. Good. Here's the thing. As visionaries, we can't wait for the world to give us permission to shine our creative brilliance. 
we've got to give ourselves permission to be the trendsetters and creative change makers. With that being said, meet Yasusan. Yasusan works for his 68 year old kimono family business. The Japanese tradition pays high respect to the honor of maintaining their family legacy in everything that they do. The family name in the Japanese culture is highly revered and comes with a great mandate to never dishonor the family name and legacy. Very similar to the African tradition and African way of being and philosophy. I think that's why I love the Japanese culture so much. So Yasu-san, being a young, hip and internationally exposed stakeholder in an established traditional Japanese family business, sometimes feels conflicted when challenged by his own imagination to creatively honor the tradition and history of the kimono, which is such a beautiful piece of artwork that women adore themselves with yet follow the inspiration to reimagine the kimono for the younger generation. As we notice, the younger generation are not really that interested in our cultural upbringing. How many young people still wear their traditional cultural clothes? And Yasu-san wants to reignite that beauty of the kimono with the younger generation to preserve the Japanese culture all around the world. His love and duty to honor his culture and, and his adventurous nature keep his spirit restless as he keeps sensing into the possibilities. He keeps sensing that the possibilities are infinite if he courageously takes the risks to expand globally. He knows that there are so many young Japanese that are seeking to connect with their Japanese culture and seeking to connect with the spirit of Japan back home. Young Japanese professionals working in New York City, Australia, London, Shanghai, Korea, Africa, and they are proud to be Japanese. And he wants to connect with them and remind them of what it is to be a proud Japanese traveling the world. But he feels a little cautious when he calculates the million and one steps it takes to breaking into a new market. As the next CEO of this beautiful 68 year old clothing brand, he feels the pressure to make his family proud because he feels grateful for his ancestors' hard work. As the call for Yasu-san to step up in his leadership role becomes more prominent, he intuitively knows that he needs to rely heavily on his creativity to break into new markets. But his concepts don't seem to get the excitement and traction he had originally hoped for in Japan until he and his company saw a video of a South African CEO dancing half naked in the desert wearing a kimono. And Yasu-san knew that his ideas were not crazy at all. In fact, he was onto something big, but he needed to position his brand to a different audience. In a 2020 study, called The Power of Women in Family Businesses, A Generational Shift in Purpose and Influence, KPMG interviewed over 1,800 family business leaders in every major region of the world about their concerns for growth, their concerns for diversity within the family business, and where they see the future in the next five to 10 years. And some of the key insights from the research demonstrated that women and men have an opportunity to work together to remove stereotypes and engender greater diversity in family business. Both men and women contribute to gender stereotyping 
and they need to work together to clearly define their roles and responsibilities and communicate them to all the stakeholders. Families should actively socialize both men and women from an early age to garner know-how of the business and pursue the required education and training to prepare them for a career in the family business. In a 2022 PwC's Global Next Gen survey, one of the most interesting quotes I read was that business as usual isn't an option in a world characterized by economic disruption, pervasive uncertainty, and climate change. The previous year, in 2021, the Family Business Survey conducted by PwC found that the top three priorities, all the family business owners that they interviewed, their top priorities were expanding into new markets and finding new clients in new markets, introducing new products and services within the local market so that they can later expand into the global market, and strategic mergers and acquisitions. And what was very interesting about the, the findings from the survey from PwC was that only 34% of the family businesses had a robust, documented and communicated succession plan in place. Having grown up in a family business and having seen the family, the family drama and the family hatred and the family conflict that happens in family when a succession plan is not put in place. And then the founder of the business suddenly has an illness or passes away and there is no time to delegate the assets or hand over the business. And there also wasn't time for the founder to train the young CEO that is coming up. It's been a very fascinating journey through COVID to watch how companies have had to shift an increase in diversification in their family businesses and their family holdings. There's so much change happening in the world. And if you feel out of control, if you feel like you're a fish that is just out of water and you were expecting to retire and now retirement looks like a dream that will never, ex that will never happen, please know that you're not alone and Sia Bong for being a part of our international business collaboration thus far. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to never miss an episode. And also please visit us at futuregenleaders.com forward slash change to explore more provocative episodes on creative change. If you're faced with overwhelming change you didn't ask for, and you know, there's still that spark in you and that resilience and that, and that fearlessness in you that knows that you can weather the storms of change and, you, and emerge stronger. Please declare, please declare to yourself because only you can encourage yourself in the darkest of moments. Please declare to yourself by writing in the comments section, my life is purposeful. My skills are purposeful. Every setback is a setup for a stronger comeback. I declare this as the victory of my soul. I declare this as the victory of my business. I declare this as the victory of my finances. I declare this as the victory of my life. I am victorious. My life is a victorious adventure. I declare this as the victory of my life. And so it is. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Please make sure to you subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a so that you never miss an episode. We have meditation sessions, we have affirmation sessions, we have mindfulness mentoring sessions. Please join us on this adventure where we have a cultural brand collaboration with a Zulu woman from South Africa who carries the wisdom of the African ancestors and with a Japanese company 
who carries the wisdom of the Japanese ancestors and an American who carries the wisdom and the creativity of the American ancestors who were fearless and bold and courageous in their innovation in business. Please continue to watch our videos as we grow and learn how to do business internationally. Thank you for joining us. See you on the next episode. Bye for now.